let's get Laura Lance down, lady who tells me those things wrong. Thank Jesus Christ, what a terrible opening for episode number 100. Episode number 100. 100! It's a big day for us, big day. All right. It's really something. It's As you can tell, all, we're here with all of our friends. All it proves is <laughs> there are 100 Fridays where we had nothing to do. <laughs> we had no plans. Because let's be honest, the weeks where something was going on that was better, we didn't do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. We didn't do it or we, you know. But th actually, those were few and far between. I mean, we, 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 we've been pretty good. Last year was touch and go. And yeah. You know, last year was touch and go. But I think we did our Yeah, we'll blame it on COVID. Blame it on just a crummy year. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, I mean, plus, there was nothing to talk about. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Like, what's going to happen? That's why I stopped writing. You know, what am I going to write about? I, I was writing about uh, the past. Like, you know, like Dwight Evans was yeah. such a good right fielder. You know, it's yes. it's almost like the, like real estate agents. <laughs> when the market's great, yeah, anybody can sell the fucking house, right? Like, the good real estate agents are when it's like the market's down <laughs> and you're still like putting food on the table, right? Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was so if you, by this logic, though, if you think about it, because you had trouble writing when it wasn't good, I'm a shitty writer. <laughs> Well, you said it. I mean, I was, you, well, said listen, it. You, you said it. So, welcome, welcome to episode 100 of uh, the Lord of Our Lands Down uh, Red Sox Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jacaris. Alongside me, always, is Andrew Andrews. And uh, I don't, don't like my knees. You don't like your knees? In the camera. I'm going to sit like this. <laughs> Got some potato knees going on. Uh, look, first and foremost, here's what I want to do I want to start out by thanking a bunch of people. Uh, I want to thank. Um, Ev Singleton, yeah, uh, over at Guy Boston Sports for uh, you know took a chance and two guys, two young rural <laughs> uh, you know, giving us the chance to um, you know start a podcast, which which of course was originally called Balls Deep, and uh, you know he gave us the chance and we had a lot of fun uh, doing that stuff. KJ Doyle, Sean Palmer, I like to thank all those guys over at Guy Boston Sports. Uh, I want to thank Paul Westner for joining the yeah, show. Yeah, been great. And I uh, want to get him back in there now that COVID's uh, wrapping up. Uh, I want to thank Drew Athens for coming on to the show. Yes. Also, mo more than coming on the show, even before Drew ever yeah. came on the show, he was very complimentary. He was very, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, definitely. He was he was a supporter from the beginning. Yep. Uh, I want to thank Andy's family for having my ass over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, good. Every, Fri good. every Friday, I just walk in. You Sometimes you wouldn't even be here. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, right, I'm going to go downstairs and set this thing up. Uh, so I, I'd like to thank all those people. Am I missing anyone? Um, I got a couple real quick. Yeah. Uh, my brother did fill in. T. Andrews, yes. you filled in on one show, so we'll give you a little credit for that. Uh, someone you don't know, but um, local, uh, he's actually happens to be on the school committee now, but a friend of mine, uh, Nathan Pulowski, has been very good. He bought a T-shirt, and, you know, He's been yep. showing it, showing it off. So definitely, Mike, Mike O buying T-shirts. Yes, from Mike us. Oliveira definitely involved. Yep. So uh, it's we, been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. We appreciate everything. Uh, we, you know, we we have a blast. You know, at one, at one point, the I think the you know the last time we checked the podcast ratings again, you know, we're we were the number five. I think we slipped a little bit, but we were the, <laughs> we were the, we were the number five podcast, uh, Red Sox podcast, um, in the charts. Um, very recently, and we have no corporate sponsorship or you know nothing. Nah, know, we just do our thing. We're we're above a lot of like we're above some Red Sox podcasts that have yeah uh, affiliations. I mean, let's be honest, we have we have very little ambition. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Oh, Terry Cushman, like to also yes, like, been very good to us. Like to thank Terry for everything he's done for us and the advice he's given us um about podcasting and about uh you know about my red sox writing and everything else so terry has been there terry we're gonna get you on the show i promise uh but thank thanks everyone for uh that. jimmy fallon huge fan yeah yeah um wade boggs huge fan wade boggs <laughs> text me mm -hmm. uh <laughs> so yeah all right so uh on today's show um we're gonna talk about the uh yankee series first i guess i guess that's what we'll do yeah it's 
So a little bit of a litmus test. Tell two teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, I wasn't able to print out any of these any of these things. It was also a formatting issue, so I had to take actual notes. All right. So yeah, uh, first Fourth game, quarter. Yankees win. Yankees win. Uh, I'm sorry, Red Sox win five to two. Obviously, it was a sweep. Baldy wins. Devers goes deep. Um, kind of Baldy kind of made me eat my shit that game because yeah. right before I was crap on him, and so. I guess I'm wrong about Evaldi. He always wins. Well, he he always win, he always <laughs> wins at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, he is good at Yankee Stadium. I'll give him that. I mean, he pitched for the Yankees. There's something about the place. He does not melt down there. He makes it happen. And unfortunately, this year they don't seem to be an issue. But right, they, they will be. So maybe it's a good thing. Uh, next game, Red Sox win seven to three. Erod wins um, five inning pitch, three earned, seven Ks. Uh, Bobby Dahlbeck with that. Freaking absolute hour of a shot. Uh, that was that was his big game, but he's he's struggling. He's he's below the Mendoza line. Um, we're gonna see what happens with him, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Third game was that uh, it was a national game on Sunday night, I believe. Yeah. Uh, six to five extra innings. That is both the- games are national games. Actually, Saturday was two one yeah, yeah. Um, six to five. That was the game where. There was a strike called that was a foot off the plate, and Paul went. Paul uh, Westner uh, went went nuts on that. Which until the next time it happened to the Yankees, right, was the worst call you've seen in your life. Right, that one recently where Girardi Girardi got tossed on this one, right? Uh, you, uh, you mean uh, what's his name? Not Girardi. Dude who hit the freaking. Home I meant the coach. Yeah, it's not Girardi. Oh, it's Boone. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, My bad. Yeah. Maybe. So, yeah. So, he got tossed on that one? Yeah, on the first one. Yeah. Not the most recent one. Yeah. He no. cowered in the dugout like right. a little. And the guy, I guess bus. the guy who had COVID, who wasn't even supposed to be in the clubhouse, he's the one who, like, stormed out and was starting. Oh, the coach you tried to yeah. stop? Yeah. yeah. He's like, no, you can't go out there. And the so. Tossed him. And I, By I, the way, horrible call. I like, said I'm, this earlier, though. I said this before. I, I think we talked about it either that podcast or the one before. Yeah. I think the umpires have been bad this year. Mm-hmm. It just and again, it's eye test and I and sticking to form. The Red Sox have benefited from the, right. from the umpires being bad. I, I do think more than not. And wow, some of these things they missed. That last one and that I saw, the one you know that happened most recently. I, the Yankees, who were they playing? I, I don't remember. And uh, it was bad. Yeah. Well, that was that was the criticism. But my father-in-law is a Yankees fan, and um, you know he. Not a good person. Anyway. <laughs> he was talking about, you know, same thing Paul was talking about in our private text, which is the heads need to start rolling for the Yankees because Boone Boone should have been ejected back in. Not a bench coach, not the guy who's hiding, you know, in the in the no, that house. Was... He needs to go out there, cover the plate with dirt, do the whole thing. The fact that two guys team. got ejected before he did just shows that like like that's like like a military coup. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, it's – you're no, done, dude. No, I mean, you, you you have to stick up for your team. You have to fire it up. I mean, look, obviously I'm not a Yankees fan. I, I hope they crash and burn. But as a as a baseball fan, the right move he, – he's – he pussyfoots around stuff, man. You know, he's t- – tip through. Oh, we're, you know, it's a it's a marathon. Oh, we're going to get better. Good teams hit into double plays. This yeah. one thing, dude, shut up. And cause a stink. Go, like go bat shit crazy. Do that thing with that, that dude where he fuck. You know, he's doing the fake grenades and all that stuff. You have to. You have to go mental, so your team has your back. I don't. I mean, I don't. It, it, it's a rudderless ship right now with the Yankees, and that's absolutely fine well, but with me. Yeah, dude, before that though, it was easy because you had a maniac in the suite up top, right? Who was just going to do that for you? Right. He'd fire you mid game. Yeah, or players would be getting screamed at or right. be done, and then they'd fix it. I, they'd bring St- it Steinbrenner would fire you in the fifth inning. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd make a call down. be like, yeah, what's Beautiful. up? It's like, Billy Martin's fired. He would do that. <laughs> he'd literally do that. Then he'd rehire him. Then he'd fire him. He'd rehire Beautiful. him. Uh, yeah, so uh, Garrett Richards pitched that game, did pretty well. Uh, Verdugo and Gonzalez, Homer. Uh, Xander had a great game. He, Xander had a little bit of a slump. He's kind of back at it. He has the best uh, war on the on the team yes. right now. All right, so then they had a quick uh, one game series with the Marlins. Uh, it was a makeup game. Uh, Nick Pavetta pitched pitched pretty well. Adam Ottavino. All right, listen to this guy. He got the save. He has given up one earned run 
since May 6th, I believe. So he is, he's dialed in. Pitching that's, well. That's the Ottavino that you get where he's, you know, all the movement. He's still hard. To, he's still yeah, hard to watch. Well, he's, he's, he's uncomfortable to watch. He's annoying. He's the Jackie Bradley of pitchers almost, right? There's something there, strikes. yeah. He'll, <clears throat> there's always going to be guys on base because somebody's getting walked. Yep. You're like, the idea of him striking out three in a row. It, yeah, it's novel. <laughs> it, 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 it just doesn't seem like like it's going to happen. He's not going to have an immaculate inning, you know? <laughs> which, which I know you can't stand. And, uh, but I, I don't even think, like, I don't think he'll have a one, two, three inning. Like, somebody's getting walked. Yeah. And that's fine because he, yep. he finishes things and it's okay, but yeah, eventually. Well, it's good to see him kind of figuring it out. And, I mean, I, I do think that he will go back to this – Sort of, you know, I think he'll have some stinkers. He's yeah, a, he's a relief pitcher, man. You know, if, if he was any good, he'd be a closer or a starter. No, That's he's it. very, he's, he's kind of wild thing. All right, so then the Red Sox uh, asked, so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves, right? Patting ourselves on the back. They were back. They lost a couple games before. You're like, oh, the Sox really got to do something. All yeah. of a sudden, things, things were feeling good. And then the Astros roll into town. Uh, not so good. Martin Perez was due for a stinker, and he had one. Yeah, he really did. Uh, that first game against the Astros, my son had a baseball game. I came home, sat on the couch, and I was like, all right, I want to watch this game. Astros, Red Sox, great matchup. I turned it out, I was like, whatever, whatever it was, second, third inning. It was already, at that point, it was, I think it was six to six, nothing. Six, yeah. Right? They had six by then. And I was like, crap. And I, I stuck through it. I watched a couple of innings. I said, ah, maybe they can scratch and claw their way back. They did not. Uh, so that was game one. Uh, game two. Avaldi, after his strong performance at Yankee Stadium. And I thought he was back, baby. Yeah, he was not back at all. Uh, gave up five runs and uh, not, I think it was six. No, um, it was six innings. I know I looked up and it was the second inning, and he, had, he was on pitch 49. Yeah. And you see that and you go, oh, things aren't working out. And just for, regardless of the score. Yeah. And unfortunately, the score was bad. It's... I really thought he was back, and it just – it doesn't seem like – he's down a little bit in his velocity, I think, overall. I mean, he can still get up to it every now and then, but the command doesn't seem there. He's putting people on base. He's walking a lot of people. It's not great. Yeah, well, that was that was his thing. What, you know, he's two, very inconsistent. That's two, the problem. Two, three years ago, that was his thing. It's like, yeah, he could have been, like, kind of all over the place, but he was throwing 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So – you know that that that's what it's all about nowadays with uh you know with uh, pitchers like are we only doing that in the playoffs now yeah i guess but yeah i mean i don't know all right so uh then last night the red sox win 12 to 8 we we were texting and it's like this ain't over yet like they're going to ha- i think you actually said it. i thought they were going to lose you you were like they're going to have to score 15 runs yeah. to win and they scored 12 runs and they did win but it was a four run game because you know uh, when they tied it up at 7 7. Yep. And then immediately the next inning. Yep. It was 8 7. I was like, ah, never mind. It's not going to happen tonight. But, but, yep, they made it happen. Zach Greinke only lasted uh, three innings pitched. Erod, 4.2 innings pitched. He is now over a six ERA. Uh, I got to tell you something about this guy because I did a little bit of uh, did, did a little bit of research. So this year is his, this is it for him. He's a free agent after this year. Okay. Wouldn't say he's putting his best foot forward. I say get whatever you can for this guy. I'm personally done with him. I don't think he has a future in Boston. Um, I want to get something for him. Do you trade him like the year's over? That's tough. Because to really maximize the trade, you have to accept that you're going to take people who might not be ready to win you a World Series. So you're going to accept. Tanner Tanner Houck and the Wings. Fair enough. Chris Sale coming back. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. You got you got two guys coming, you know, two guys coming in. I'm all set with Erod. I've been touch and go with him 2019. I thought he turned the corner. But do you want a major league ready player to help you now, or do you want? Are, are we still trying to fix that nightmare that is? The, I think prospects. I yeah. Think, I, I think okay. You 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 ship Erod off. Maybe a change of scenery. Uh, get a couple of. It's a hard sell. It's yeah. He's having a tough year. But again, I think you can do. I think you can sell it by doing the hey look. He had COVID last year. Didn't pitch at all. 
Uh, look what he did in 2019 before. It's kind of like Tommy time. John, like the, yeah. the second year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I think you may be able to get something for him. The fact um, that he hasn't been hurt. Right. He hasn't been physically. Yeah, yeah. he hasn't had those little ticky-tack things that you said, the knee and the elbow. And He's another one, though. He doesn't seem like he, I mean. See the Tuka Rask of, like, the Red Sox, like these ticky-tack injuries? You know the talent's there, but. Yeah. But he just can't. He just can't. Yeah, he's a little worse. I, I. He really doesn't feel like he's attacking people. He, uh, and we keep saying that it's such a generic thing, right? It's, it's he really everything is that he just tried away, right? Away, right? Away, and it and nitpick nibble, and next thing you know, it's a million times. It's the fifth thing. Yep, ninety-eight pitches. Yep. <laughs> no, I know. I but I, fourth I'm, inning. I'm ready. Eighty-two pitches. I'm ready to cut bait with this guy. And I think, I think because it is a contract here, I don't want to resign him personally. So no, I don't think you. I, so get get something for him. Listen, I'll take him for my fifth starter. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? Like if he's a fourth or fifth guy who I'm paying, and this is insane even to say this, but eight million dollars a year, right? Six million dollars a year, somewhere right. in there. Yep. All right. Yeah, I give you a year or two. He, he, he has been cheap for the Red Sox, but I don't know. I'm, I'll I'm take not... him cheap, but he, this is what annoyed me was just people – forget the money. People who are talking about, like, he's an ace in Major League Baseball. Yep. It's not even close. Yeah, he's not. He's had one – had... Evaldi's better, and Evaldi's not an ace in Major League Baseball. Right. He's had one good year, folks, and it's 2019, and, and that was it. You know, if, if, if the COVID thing, you know, halted his progress, well, you know – Sorry, like, mean it. Like, that sucks. You know what I mean? But didn't pitch it all last year. Hasn't been good this year. It's his free agent year. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to pay this guy. What are we going to pay this guy? $20 million a year for a four year contract? I mean, give me a break. All right. Anyway, so mixed bag result weekend for the, I'm, I'm glad they didn't get swept by the Astros. Astros are clearly the superior team right now. They're the best team in the American League. And, you know, we talked about this, you know, you wonder how much they didn't have to cheat to have the success. It, it really did seem like it, you know. So, well, anyway, speaking of cheating, and arguably, they had better pitchers then, right? Like the lineup is, I think, a little better. Well, now. They had Garrett Cole, yeah, you know that Alvarez dude is, yeah, a monster. Yep, I know he's a monster. He crushes the ball. So to have him in the lineup too, it just the pitchers don't have the names that they had before, but right. they still make it happen. Well, that's yeah. like the race. And Verlander's hurt, so yeah. Absolutely. All right. Anyway, um, so speaking of cheating, so there's been a lot of stuff about uh, – there's been a couple of uh, accusations here. So substances on balls. Yep. All right. Uh, specifically with Garrett Cole of the Yankees. Um, and juiced baseball accusations as well that Major League Baseball is juicing, juicing certain balls or putting certain balls into play when certain guys are up. It's what? It's like really, really crazy. Yes. Oh, I'm so, sorry. I, when you said this was a topic, I thought you were talking about the actual guys doing it. So, former Red Sox player thinks Pete Alonso, Pete Alonso, of course, plays for the Mets. Theory about Major League Baseball manipulating baseball makes sense. Something's off. Hopefully, something comes out before the CBA because this could get really messy. And the former Red Sox player is uh, Will Middlebrooks. All right. So, this was CBS Sports. Okay. Um, now they have the rights to the uh, capability. Wait, before you actually yeah. go. Yep. And I don't hate Will Bilbrook. He seems like yeah. a good dude. Yeah, I've tweeted back and forth with him. He's, he's yeah, it cool. seems all right. The fact that this is him. Yeah. Well, Pete Alonso's legit, though. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's legit. No, I, he's also having a real bad year this year. Yeah, well, maybe that, that's part of it. All right. Um. Now that they have the rights and capacity of accessing the manufacturer of the baseballs that they use every day, that's something to think about. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist here, but I do think there's an issue. And another thing is they change the ball every year. What other sport does that? That's a, that's a really good point. It's like, well, we're changing the balls. Um, in 2019, there was a huge class of free agent pitchers. And then that's quote unquote, the juiced balls. And then 2020 was a strange year with COVID. But now that we're back to playing in a regular season with a ton of shortstops or position players that are going to be paid a lot of money, like high caliber players, I mean, yeah, it's not a coincidence. It's definitely something that they do. That was Pete Alonso speaking. 
right? Whoa, 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 stop. Is Pete Alonso saying the fact that he's kind of dog shit this year is because it's a contract year? Because the balls are deader. This year. And Major League Baseball is actively making sure that Pete Alonso does not get a big contract. Well, I don't think he's up for a contract, but he's he's, he's close. He's trying to put two and two together. This is very QAnon, man. Middle, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Mid Middlebergs comes back. His point makes sense. All of a sudden, 2018, they juice balls, and then, like you said, they had this big class of pitchers. While those ERAs are obviously through the roof, their home runs given up, runs given up, everything is bigger, so you don't have to pay them as much. So the conspiracy theory is that, you know, you make the pitchers look like shit. When it, you know, to, to make sure that you're not paying these huge contracts. And then when the hitters, when all the big hitters are up, you deaden the ball so that you don't have to give them big contracts. What do you got on that, Andy? Dude. QAnon? <laughs> that would make the owners of Major League Baseball the biggest dickheads of all time. But, see, I, I go the other way. Better than, like, Vince McMahon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? I refused these slack jawed inbreds who are running so many of these organizations because great granddaddy won on a dice game. Yep. Okay? Are you yeah, fucking yeah. kidding? These guys are doing that. They got that figured out. Is there some like Lex Luthor running <laughs> the whole thing at the top? I mean, Come yeah. On, do, they, do, do, they, do they have a guy? Who does that? Like all, like all the owners are like, all right, this is our like sly guy who like does these, does these like, like, like minute things. Like, you there's know, like one like, dude like, in a, hey. there's one guy in a satellite, yeah. geosynchronous <laughs> above Cooperstown yeah. who just got this big display. Is it, is it, is, is it like is all it, the owners are robots? Even nerdier <laughs> than Bill James, right? Like yeah. even nerd. Like is Carmine like a real robot? Like that's is it. it. <laughs> Every <laughs> owner is an actual <laughs> android. Yeah. It's like a life decoy model. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, I think uh, uh, to your point. Look, that so that sounds a little bit too. But you know, but the whole thing is that they do change the ball every year. It sounds like Pete's got to focus a little bit. Yeah. I mean, no, they do change the ball every year, and I get it. But how much can they really change it? Right. Number one, and they change the. You know, it, it I seems don't... hard for me to believe that. They look at the data and say, okay, who's coming up as a free agent? All right, there's a lot of pitchers coming up. We're going to change the ball. There's a lot of batters going yeah. to change the ball so that we don't have to pay them X amount of money. The money the money is going to be there. I'll argue the money they pay them when offense is the thing, yeah, way outweighs it. You know what I mean? So I, I just – I could almost understand a pitcher saying this. Right, exactly. Well, but speaking of pitchers saying things. From a batter, <laughs> from a batter standpoint, come on, dude. Yeah. Well, from a batter standpoint, hit the ball to the opposite field, bunt a guy over, hit out of a shift. Yeah. Shh. Shh. Stop talking. You guys could all be hitting like 390. Right. <laughs> if, if you would just stop with the launch angle and all that shit. All right. Speaking of pitchers, uh, in, a, in a shocking revelation, Trevor Bauer, okay, uh, says that, um, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, tacky stuff going on in uh, in, in baseball, and um, Yankees pitcher um, I was gonna say Garrett yeah Garrett Cole yep. uh, kind of got a little bit busted. He didn't kind of deny it. Where um, you know there's this uh, what do they call it hard tack or whatever yeah stuff you know stuff that uh, Clay Buckholtz used to use it. There's a bullfrog, and you mix it with a little bit of this. And, and Degrom, the other. there's a there's a viral video now where he kind yeah. of touches, touches his belt, his, his glove. Yep. And uh, of course, back in our day, back in the archaic days, uh, it was uh, the uh, Necro Brothers in there. Yep. The um And who was the Yankees pitcher? Uh, Sir Cervino? Was it? Yeah. Was it him? The, the, yep. From Cuba. Yep. yep. He had the big. He, he had the, like the um, big pine tar on his neck. And all that stuff. So the so the point is this: you put a substance on on your on your fingers, and it gives you a little bit more grip on the ball, which which gives a little bit more surface area, which gives it more spin rate, and that's well, that's the now they can mathematically actually look and kind of see a change. It's ridiculous. I know. But. All right. So you know this is this is the whole thing. 
Major League Baseball has uh, vowed to crack down, and they're going to do like um, you know uh, random checks of uh, of these guys. That's the wrong way to go. Uh, they yeah, what do, you got, what do you got on this? They should allow it and encourage it. Yeah. Um, dude, when the ball moves, it's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like when someone throws, like come out with a substance that's allowed. Yeah. yeah you can use this. You can use this. Batters, it, it, batters can use pine tar. They can they they can use yeah, the rosin bag. They but, use the rosin bag, whatever. Yeah, but they, they're allowed pine tar. Or here's what you're allowed. Mm-hmm. Breaking balls are so cool. Yep, let's get crazy. Cut <laughs> fastball, it's so cool. No, that's why, you know, I, I, both Andy and I are a big proponent of make steroids legal. <laughs> like, you know, like, you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, I mean, I, I want I want to see bombs. And that's the thing, you know, I'm sick of I'm sick of these people who are like, oh, the Astros cheated. Oh, the Yankees cheated. Oh, the Red Sox cheated. Everybody, literally every single team in professional sports cheats somehow. They, they try to get away with, with, with little ticky-tack things here and there. Stop with the cheating thing. Because everything's ticky-tack. Like, save, I mean, if you actually, a mobster says, you know, you need to take a dive. Right, then, right. That, that's bad. But, right. like, everything is ticky-tack until they get caught. Right. And then it's a big deal. Right, exactly. And, and no one says anything. Everyone knows it's going on. Everyone... You know, everyone knew that the that the Astros thing was going on. It was until someone said it. I was like, hey, you know, it's kind of, you know, it kind of sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everyone's like, well, wait, what? And then they got investigated, X, Y, Z, right? But I mean, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, what was it? Not, not Spygate. Um, Deflategate? No, it wasn't Deflategate. Was it Watergate? It was Watergate. You know, Nixon really. Well, what do you do? actually, actually, I will talk about hey, Watergate. You he wasn't doing anything. Doing. He, was, he, was, hey. he wasn't doing anything <laughs> that anyone else wasn't doing. I mean, give me a break. Um, no, but the, you know, the Astros, like that stuff, was egregious, and people knew about it. And someone finally said, "You know, that kind of sucks." You know, people kept their mouth shut. You know, because they, they're, they're, in a, they're, they're in a like, union, man. They're in a union, and people don't want to blow up. Other union members. I guess, I guess the thing is, honestly, in that situation, another team should have told the Astros to cut the shit. Right. And it, it should have been just dealt with as far as like, other hey, play, man, Other players. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, as other players should be like, dude, you have to stop doing that. Like, it's, come on, man. We're, we're all in the same union. Right? I'm going to say something on TV. Right. You keep doing it. Right. Like, it's, and then like, it would have stopped. We're, we're both in a union. And it's like, you know. If it's like, oh, so it's the other guys who knew on other teams, right. like they really should have been like, come on, yeah. In and in, 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 but you know what? Maybe they did. Maybe they did. And yeah. They still kept doing that shit, and they're like, all right, well, I'm gonna go public with this. Thing. I guess maybe they did. It's. It seems like you get to a point where you'd say to, you know, your GM, and yep. you talk to even the commissioner, like, listen, yeah, everyone knows they're doing it. Talk to them. Tell, like, tell them to stop. So if it went all the way to the commissioner and nothing was done, that is way well, worse than the fact that it was done. So that's, that's a did that happen? Story. Yeah, that's a whole other story. You know what I mean? But you know this. I, I think this whole substance thing. This this whole substance thing. This has been going back for ages, right? So you know, oh, did someone have a, like a tack in their glove? Yeah, I think someone had a tack. I forgot who it was. They used to cut the baseball. You know, he used to, you know, put it in his mouth and go like this, and he used to scuff it. When you scuff a baseball, that's why, that's why after every foul ball, after, you know, you said, why do they use so many baseballs, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah, because, because once you get a scuff on that thing, the ball moves differently and it moves, yeah, it, it jumps around. If the ball bounces on the dirt on the way to the oh catcher once, do we really need a new ball? Get oh, that. my God. These, these pictures. All right, so nearly 15 months after undergoing Tommy John surgery, Chris Sale says he is confident he will be ready to contribute to the Boston Red Sox before the end of the season. So they are thinking about August, Andy, for the Chris Sale return. I believe he threw. Well, first of all, it started in June. So now we're at August. Okay, yeah. So uh, Chris Sale, I, I guess he threw 25 pitches the other day off of a mound. Um, 
you know, he's rehabbing X, Y, Z. Everyone's like, you know, people like, oh, look out, he's coming back. What are your predictions for Chris Sale? Is he going to be the same pitcher? Is he going to be a better pitcher? Is he going to be exponentially worse? Is he going to be able to contribute to this team? And is it going to be enough? So in other words, when the, when the trade deadline comes, right, and the Red Sox are sitting in second place right now, they're playing pretty good baseball still. I mean, yeah, you know, they, lost, they look, the Astros are a good team. They lost to a good team. But they swept the Yankees. Um, you know, they've done okay against the Rays. Um, they've done pretty okay against pretty much every, yeah. every, every decent team. No, they, they've, they haven't lost that many series. Right. So, I mean, what are you thinking about this? What do you think? Predictions, I guess. Where is this going to be? <sighs> it's tough because it's so easy just to say Chris Hill has no chance. He just, body type. Age. Age, from what I've heard him say on the microphone. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it seems like you really, really got to be into it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's really, really into it. And I hope I'm proven wrong. I just, I, I don't have a lot of ex expectations. So he comes back in August, which means at most ten starts. No, no, Stop. probably four. No, oh, once, once a week for eight weeks, maybe eight starts. Okay, so eight starts. Five I mean, three, four and four. It's not even the wins or loss. Does he average? Five innings a game. Because he's on a pitch count. He's, 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 yeah, he's 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 going to be on a pitch count. They're not going to. So forget. So forget the first two starts. So say six starts. Yep. Does he average five innings a game? Average, probably. Does he pitch? He, does he have a complete game? No. 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 Does he go eight? Maybe once. Really? I think so. How many strikeouts in eight starts? Yeah, see, that's the thing. You got to see where the velocity is. You got to see how his breaking stuff is. I mean, you know, he's 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 you know he's got a devastating breaking ball, and but it's complemented by the fact that he used to be able to throw a million miles an hour. He's a lefty. He's tall. I mean, he's imposing. Like forty strikeouts would be five a game. I would go under. I would say maybe 30 strikeouts. But I don't know. Because of the first couple. Because, it's, it's, so, because sometimes guys come out of the other end of Tony oh, they're John's supposed surgery to. better than they were before. Does he seem like that guy? He doesn't to me. He does not seem like he that guy. He doesn't to me. That's the problem. But here's, here's the thing, though. Like, I, I don't think any Red Sox fan – can dispute the fact that we all love Chris Sale's attitude, his competitiveness in what he says, the fact that he takes, um, uh, you know, he takes responsibility. If he, if he pitches a shitty game, he's like, that's on me. I got to pitch better. Yeah, he's been good about that. You know, so I think that we appreciate about him. But he's I, got a little bit of that baseball tough guy. You know, yeah. like, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, a bit of a giant, yeah, giant over the back. Yeah, you're exactly right. So it's you say that, and he does. He says the right things a lot. When he says the wrong things, it's just like, yeah, like real bad. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I it's it's very difficult to predict how much he will be able to contribute to this. Team. Yeah, I really do. Because to your point, because of his body frame of everything else all right before we before we end this podcast so i want everyone to uh check out the news because uh i was sitting in uh, uh an office today uh, with some co-workers and one of uh one of our co-workers her husband uh is i believe a state police officer and he's he does like uh rescue stuff like he does this great like he's like you know chopper like repelling out of a chopper stuff right and she was talking to him on the phone and she goes I, we're overhearing this and she goes so wait he was eaten by a whale right and we're all like what did you just say 
So she's on the phone, whatever, she gets off the phone. She goes, well, I just talked to, to my husband and, uh, you know, they just did a rescue. This guy was eaten by a whale and the whale, like, he was in the, he was like literally in the whale's mouth and the whale spit him out or just, like burped him out. was like, oh shoot, like, this is not my type of food. Perhaps the guy was a... Um, Maybe he lit a fire in his boat. <laughs> like this, a is, this is Pinocchio shit. Yeah. Right? So the guy was a, um, a, a lobster diver. So he was checking out his pots. The whale freaking ate him. It was trapped, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's... I didn't know. I mean, that's what I would have done. Right? So we're like, what the hell are you talking about? She's like, yeah, this guy ate a whale. So after... after, whale. after it was a sperm whale. Cape Cod. So we're like, this is the most bizarre story. So we're at uh, we're at the bar after work. All of a sudden, on USA Today, Boston.com, man is eaten by sperm whale. <laughs> sperm whale. Get you know they he puked him up or whatever, and they rescued this guy. He had a broken leg. He's like, yeah. He's like, I was in the whale's freaking mouth. He's like, I, he's like, I didn't know what was going on. He's like, I was swimming down to get the thing. And he's like, all of a sudden, it was like, you know, like, like a, he was inside the freaking whale's mouth. This is so bizarre, dude. I wish I was joking about it. You got to look it up. It just, ha- it just happened. He didn't see the whale? He didn't see the whale because the whale came from behind. Wow. And I don't know what the whale thought he was doing because whales generally don't eat, like, Big ass thing. I mean, we we'll, sperm mean, whales eat like. Do they, uh, do, do they eat like like squid and shit? Oh, like do they? they oh, yeah. Sperm whales. Are so they don't have the the brill. No, they got teeth. I believe. I believe teeth, sperm whales right? like hundreds, but they dive like super deep. Yeah. Dude, it was eaten by. Can you met like being like yeah? Fuck I sur- I, I survived. <laughs> hey, my all. all right, that's episode number one one hundred. Boy, the loaded on land. Dive for lobsters. Just throw the fucking pot in, dude. You pull it up from the boat. <laughs> the Asshole. What a lands down Red Sox baseball podcast. I'm your host, Mark Chikaris. 100. This is Andrew Andrews. He is my co-host. I want to thank everyone who is who has listened. Uh, honestly, uh, you guys, uh, you know, all 12 of our, <laughs> our viewers, we love you guys. Uh, thanks to all our co-hosts. Everyone who's given us advice, everyone who's given us a start, we have fun doing this. We're friends anyway. We come over here, we do this thing, we drink, we get we drink beer, <laughs> we drink beers, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a great day. So thank you, cheers, and adios. We shall see you next week. All right, peace.